Enterobacter cloaca. It's a gram-negative rod. It's a facultative anaerobe and is an opportunistic pathogen. It is responsible for causing nosocomial infections, especially the respiratory and urinary. It belongs to Enterobacteriaceae family. As in this picture, you can see Enterobacter cloaca. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Today we'll be looking at Enterobacter cloaca. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcome in the comment section. So grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. Enterobacter cloaca is oxidase negative but is catalase positive and urease positive. It is lactose fermenter and is indole negative. Before talking about Enterobacter cloaca in more detail, we should know about the bacteria classification. If you guys are watching my bacteriology videos for a longer time, you now might have memorized this chart. Bacteria classified into spirochetes, also into acid fast based on acid fast staining, and there's an exception that's the Mycoplasma bacterium. Bacteria also classified based on gram staining into gram positive, we are done with all of them, and also into gram negative. Gram negative are further subdivided into cocci like Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Neisseria meningitidis, and rods, which are further subdivided into aerobic like Pseudomonas, anaerobic like Bacteroides, and facultative. Facultative are further subdivided into curved and straight. Curved ones are Campylobacter, Helicobacter, and Vibrio, and straight ones are further subdivided into enteric and related, which include E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Klebsiella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. And zoonotic, which includes Brucella, Francisella, Pasteurella, and Yersinia. And also respiratory, which are Haemophilus, Bordetella, and Legionella. Enterobacteriaceae and related organisms are further subdivided on the basis of their location. Some bacteria are present within the enteric tract, some are outside the enteric tract, and some are present in both locations. The ones that are present in both locations are E. coli and Salmonella. The ones that are present within the enteric tract are Shigella, Vibrio, Campylobacter, and Helicobacter. And the ones that are present outside the enteric tract are Klebsiella, Enterobacter, the topic of today's video, Serratia, Proteus, Providencia, Morganella, Pseudomonas, Bacteroides, Proatella, and Fusobacterium. Gram-negative bacteria are also subdivided based on different shapes, like into Diplococci, Cocobacilli, rods, and comma-shaped. Diplococci are further subdivided based on maltose fermentation. If a bacterium ferments maltose, it's Neisseria meningitidis, and if it doesn't, it's Neisseria gonorrhea. Cocobacilli includes Haemophilus influenza, Brucella, Pasteurella, Bordetella pertussis. Rose are further subdivided based on lactose fermentation. If bacteria ferment lactose, they are going to be fast or slow fermenters. Fast ones are Klebsiella, E. coli, and Terobacter. Topic of today's video, and slow ones are Serratia and others. And non-lactose fermenters are further subdivided based on oxidase test. If a bacterium is oxidase positive, it's Pseudomonas, and if bacteria are oxidase negative, they are going to be Shigella, Salmonella, Proteus, and Yersinia. Common shape bacteria are further subdivided based on certain criteria. Like if a bacterium produces urease, it's going to be H. pylori. If it grows in alkaline media, it's Vibrio cholerae, and if it grows in 42 degrees Celsius temperature, it's Campylobacter jejuni. Lecture outline, we are done with the introduction and classification. Now we'll be looking at morphology habitat and transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Morphology. Enterobacter cloaca is rod-shaped bacterium. It varies in size from 0.3 to 0.6 into 0.8 to 2 micrometers. It's pink colored. The reason is it's gram negative. Here you can see the culture of Enterobacter cloaca. Structure. Enterobacter cloaca has got a cell wall. It is encapsulated. It is not responsible for forming spores. It is motile. The reason is it has got a flagella. This is how Enterobacter cloaca looks on a culture plate. Habitate. Human beings are the hosts of Enterobacter cloaca and it is the part of normal flora of the large intestine. But it can also be found in soil and water. Transmission. Transmission occurs when the colonic flora of the large intestine colonizes the infection sites or by using contaminated intravenous fluids, total perennial nutrition solutions and medical equipment. 
Pathogenesis. Enterobacter cloaca is an opportunistic pathogen, which means it will cause a disease whenever it will find an opportunity. So, Enterobacter cloaca causes disease in immunocompromised patients like those people whose immunity is compromised. Patients having severe disease such as AIDS, Echoid immunodeficiency syndrome. It mainly causes nosocomial infections and it causes diseases in urinary tract, um, which is urinary tract infection, UTI. It might cause pneumonia or bacteremia. Clinical finding symptoms will be according to the disease caused by Enterobacter cloaca. If it causes pneumonia, symptoms will be fever, cough, chills, loss of appetite. If it causes UTI, symptoms will be burning micturition, frequent urge to urinate, fever, and nausea. Complications include sepsis, septic shock, lung abscess, paranemonic pleural effusion, empyema, and ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Lab diagnosis will need samples of blood, urine, CSF, and also samples from wound. On gram staining, this bacterium appears to be gram negative because it's pink colored. It is rod shaped. It varies in size from 0.3 to 0.6 into 0.8 to 2 micrometers. It's pink colored. This is how Enterobacter cloaca looks on a culture plate. Culture. Colonies are formed on blood agar. Colonies are smooth and rough, like these ones are the rough and these ones are the smooth in appearance. Colonies are lactose fermenting and colonies are grown on EMB, McConkey's blood agar and triptych soy broth is used for Enterobacter cloaca. And this is the triptych soy broth. Other tests, we can go for blood tests like CBC or blood culture. And urine tests are going to be urinalysis. And we'll also go for relevant imaging like CT, X-ray or MRI related to the organ infected like lungs, urinary tract or so. Treatment of infections caused by enterobacter cloaca involves carbapenems, beta-lactams, beta-lactamase inhibitors, fluoroquinolones, aminoglycosides, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, third or fourth generation cephalosporins. Prevention. There's no vaccine available for the infections caused by Enterobacter cloaca. The patient should stop the inappropriate use of medicines, those medicines which are not required. And also avoid the use of unnecessary medical devices. Like when the urinary catheter is not required, don't go for it. All right, everybody, let's have a quick recap. The organism we discussed today is Enterobacter cloaca. It is responsible for causing respiratory and urinary infections like pneumonia and UTIs. It causes disease when the colonic flora colonizes the infection sites. And also by using contaminated intravenous fluids, total parental nutrition solutions, and medical equipment. Hosts are human, soil, and water. Diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, culture, blood, and urine exam. For the treatment, carbapenems, beta-lactams, beta-lactamase inhibitors, fluoroquinolones, aminoglycosides, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, third and fourth generation cephalosporins are used. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video. Way! If you want to connect with me on my social media, I've got my Instagram and Twitter, both with the handle Medzohra. Till next time, Assalamu Alaikum.